All right, non-professional lighting here, but I got uh, octo ports in. Leaving power couplers and coin slots, charge bay, door, and then the rest of the doors. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was this door. Um, I am using the Jason Charlton hinges. Um, he modified the hinges so that the door would doors would close better. Um, he also added a hole for a metal actuator as opposed to the setup that uh, Michael Badley designed. So a piece of metal goes through that and then goes out back to the servo for open and close and he made them thicker. Uh, this is my first uh, attempt at putting a door on, which I knew was probably gonna be a pain in the neck, and it is. Uh, the first problem I had is this. Um, don't permanently glue this panel in ever, would be my advice. Um, I think I've got another video where I tell you about this one here. There's a pin, plastic pin, right here that holds this utility arm in place. It's the uh, pin that it swivels on. And if you put your charge bay door in here, and then on top of it, there's a piece like this. That piece covers up where the pin goes. So I had to pop that out to get the pin in when I did the pin. Now that I'm doing the doors, I've popped it out again so I can do the doors. So luckily when I popped that out the first time, I didn't re-glue it. This one I did glue in place and it's in there pretty darn good. And it made getting these uh, hinge blocks in a pain in the neck. I was able to get them in without busting this piece out, which is good. Um, I think it's glued. I think I glued it all down this side as well as gluing this top piece in. So I got lucky with that, but I just do not glue these at all. <laughs> just use hot glue to hold them in place because you can remove hot glue. And if you use some kind of a solvent glue or epoxy, these things, um, yeah, these panels, both this one and, and the panels and the roof, on the charge bay um, are going to be a pain in the neck. So I did manage to get the hinge blocks in without ripping this out. And I found that I had to enlarge these openings just a tad. Um, if you look, you can see just a very thin black uh, shadow down there. So there's a very thin gap where this piece isn't it's like 99.9% .9 as far down as it could go. But there's like, I don't know, a percentage of a millimeter. Maybe it could have gone further down if maybe I had sanded the bottom of this piece. Um, but the what that did was it made this opening a bit too small for this hinge piece. It was interfering with it closing and I could also hear the back this opening the side this uh, side of the opening in the back it's got angled plastic and it was lightly scraping on the hinge so first thing I did was I cut some of the back where you can't even see it because it's inside this panel and that got this once it was lined up where it was moving smoothly so it wasn't rubbing on that. And then I took an X-Acto knife and I cut some off the bottom right here of this panel. So I could get it where it would close because this hinge was hitting way too low. So that, that got fixed. So that's okay. This one, 
I had to cut quite a bit off of the actual modified hinge piece as well as the same thing it was rubbing a bit here so I went in on this side in the back and cut it with a little bit more opening and then I also cut the bottom of this open a little bit more so it was level with the hinge block because it was a bit higher and then I cut some of the bottom of this hinge to the point where it's clear and free and not rubbing against anything. Now, um, I have to look inside the droid. Can I even do that from here? No. I can't remember where the servo is, if it's up at the top or at the bottom, but wherever it is, there's the metal actuator that goes from the servo into the hole in these hinge pieces. So there has to be enough clearance for not just the hinge on the top, focus, not just the hinge on the top, but also a thin metal actuator wire. So I'm a little bit afraid that I'm gonna have to make another adjustment to make enough clearance for that wire. But that's not my main concern. My main concern is you might be able to see that that door is a little bit close. The gap is a little bit too small. Um, that wouldn't really bother me too much until I get over to here. That is a whopping big gap to my eyes. So, how do you alter a door to get it to move this way? Well, the only adjustment, are these two screws that screw into the door, loosen them and push the door back. Well, the door can't go any further back. So, the only thing I can think of, again, I want to use these hinge pins with their hole in the top as opposed to the Michael Badley ones, is to modify this hinge piece to make these screws, screw holes, further inboard. And I don't think it'll be too hard. Um, I don't do Fusion 360, but just in Tinkercad, if I load this into Tinkercad, just import this STL, and then use the plane cut feature to cut it right here, so it becomes two pieces, this angled piece and this flat piece, and then just take this flat piece and move it back a millimeter or two or however much my gap is once I measure it, then that should push those hole mounts further in and that should get rid of the gap. So I haven't tried the bread pan doors. Um, I messed with the charge bay door a little bit, and I can't remember what direction off it was. But this one, I mean, it closes okay. It's a little bit off there where it's not perfectly flush. I'm okay with that. And there's a warp here that I didn't notice before. It seems maybe it's just more pronounced because of the big gap. I can, I can feel it more than I would if it was closed. Or it could even be that this part of the body of the droid is actually um, concave a little bit. Maybe it's not perfectly horizontal here. And so I just feel a little bit of a the door bulging out a little bit, but it's still, I think that's okay. It's going to have to be, um, unless I want to keep reprinting doors until I can get one that's absolutely perfectly flat. But yeah, this, this gap to me, that gap is obviously larger than it should be. And this gap here to me looks smaller than it should be. So that seems right up against.
right up against it. So, yeah, I am going to try my hand at modifying the hinges. I'll measure this. I'm thinking it's probably a millimeter or a millimeter and a half that I'm going to uh, reduce the size of the hinge to move those mounting holes in. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, I was really happy to get these in. And I just painted this front one silver this morning. I already have all the blue accent pieces for it painted. So pretty much I need to let this piece uh, that I painted in the metallic aluminum color, this color, um, dry for like a week. And then I'll be able to epoxy in the blue highlights and put it in place. And voila, we'll have all the greebles done in the front. Um, I just put my second and hopefully final primer on this exact same piece that goes on the back side, which doesn't have to be as nice looking as this one because it's on the back side. Um, so I could have just done it the way it is right now, but I wanted to do another coat of primer just to get rid of some more of the, of the print lines that I can see in the primer. And I figured one more coat of primer with some more um, wet sanding with 400 grit should get it really nice. So then I'll have to paint it silver and I've already got all the blue parts for it done. So that's not a big deal. Just uh, an hour or so probably of wet sanding with 400 grit and then painting it and let it dry just like this one is now done and is drying. And then I've only just started on the coin returns and I've just started on this charge bay door. So this charge bay door, I put a skim coat of um, glazing putty on it and sanded 99% of it off. And then I've done my first um, coat of primer for that door. So it'll need to be sanded and then look for any imperfections and then maybe more filler or maybe just another uh, coat of primer. And these, uh, they need to be, I'm sanding them first and then I'll be spraying primer on them, and then there'll probably be filler and more primer and sanding until they're ready to be painted blue with the very uh, top of them, each one painted silver. So uh, at this point, uh, the weather is starting to turn. Uh, we've got rain now, and it could be on and off all week. So uh, it, it is getting pretty close to done for painting. Um, this is already further than I thought I was going to get this year because I didn't want to go all full time every spare minute working on it and get burnt out like I did two years ago. Um, I have spent more time on it than I should, but I'm not, I'm actually not feeling burnt out at this stage. And like I said, this basically needs to dry and then the blue, blue pieces be epoxied in it. And the doors are all painted and done apart from yeah getting things to fit right it it actually is is got a lot more done than i thought basically um i thought maybe i would get up to this point and not get the octo port or this done and none of the doors is kind of what i thought would be a realistic expectation at this point but to get those side vents and the pocket vents and the coin returns and the center grill and uh, the bread pan doors painted this door painted the octo ports i mean that's oh and i keep forgetting the the outer foot shells those were i had started working on those two years ago and then stopped so i that was the first thing that i painted this year um, the only other thing that is outstanding is the booster covers, which scare the crap out of me because they're huge and they need to be painted in the uh, Sonic Blue Pearl. And they're ready for paint and just sitting around waiting for me to get the courage to try them or maybe put those off till next year. I'm not sure. 
Um, again, you can see the shoulder details all need to be done, uh, including the ones that go in that uh, rectangular area there underneath the shoulder. And then the piece that goes inside there and the um, piece that goes in the middle of the booster. So there's still, there's still work to be done, but the fact that the actual cylindrical body itself um, it's looking like I'll be able to get that completely, all the pieces completely painted and done and assembled uh, is, yeah, is fantastic. So considering that I'm going to go to the uh, big R2 Northwest gathering November 9th at the Seattle Museum of Flight, um, I think it'll be in a pretty good shape. Unfortunately, he'll still have his primered dome. But just to have all of the body pieces in place, even though they won't be motorized by that point, I won't have all the servos in and set up and all that jazz. But, I mean, he's got a rotating head. He, he drives. He has sound. And he's looking more like a complete droid. So that's the update for today.